Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Games Digital video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with the i9-9900K, specifically some Cinebench scores which have leaked online. And what do they tell us about the processor? That it is very impressive. In fact, we have a couple of scores, one which nets just over the 2000 mark and the other which hits around the 2166 mark and by around I mean exactly 2166. So the i9-19900K of course is an 8 core 16 thread processor and is part of Intel's ninth generation of processors and will release uh, in just a few weeks time. But in regards to where we're getting this information the first is from Lau Kin Lam, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, from H. KEPC and another user by the name of Years Old Angus also published a photo which shows 8% lower than what Lau managed to achieve. However, the chip is hitting 5 gigahertz. Now, what's rather interesting about this is that we are looking at scores of around 200 to 400 points, depending on the Ryzen 2700X setup, than what AMD can achieve with their current fastest mainstream 8 core processor. Of course, the keyword is current. There is a good possibility that AMD could release a 2800X, but as we covered just a few days ago, this is not going to feature more cores. It's almost certainly just going to be a bump in clock speed, 2, 3, 400 megahertz, would certainly make the chips more competitive. It's also possible that Intel's chips will be considerably more expensive than AMD's. The rumors currently are that we're going to be paying around 450 US dollars for the 9900K. But even so, 2166 points for a mainstream processor on Cinebench is really impressive. The other factor that we need to take into consideration, of course, is it is just one benchmark. There have been a couple of others that have leaked, and so far it is looking like this particular chip is really impressive. But once again, you are paying that price premium. Whether that's worth it to you, of course, will probably be unveiled over the next couple of weeks as reviews start to come in for this particular processor. But for now, it looks like Intel will have the eight core advantage, but whether they can maintain that or not, and certainly at a price which is competitive to consumers, well, that remains, of course, to be seen. And now switch gears to the GeForce RTX 20 series, specifically some performance numbers and other information. So we'll start out with NVIDIA's official numbers with the RTX 2080 and the 2080 Ti. There has been so much discussion, of course, regarding how these cards are going to be performing against their predecessors, which of course would be the 1080 and the 1080 Ti or Ti respectively. And over at GTC Japan, NVIDIA have released various slides which give us insight into how these particular cards will perform. So we're going to start things out with some of the performance numbers here. Uh, so according to NVIDIA, 4K 60fps is going to be a standard without, and that's a key word, without DLSS enabled. But certainly if you do enable that, 4K 60fps is going to be no issues whatsoever. And you can see they have a particular slide which does tell us it's the fastest gaming GPU. We have the 980 and 980 uh, tie, and then that is then compared to the GTX 1080 and 1080 tie. And then right above that, we have the RTX 2080 tie and the RTX 2080. So it does appear, at least to NVIDIA's numbers here, and numbers is a strong word because they don't have an exact specific set of frame rates. For example, they're not saying, well, in this game, it's getting 67 frames a second. In this game, it's getting 97 frames a second. But with the RTX 2080 tie instead of the 1080 tie, you will get like 85 frames a second and 102 frames a second. You don't have that information, which is slightly disappointing. According to NVIDIA's official performance uh, results here, and we'll get into unofficial numbers in just a moment, I promise, we have the RTX 2080 beating out the 1080 Ti, and then you've got the RTX 2080 Ti, which of course destroys all of the predecessors. And we can also see that according to this particular uh, set of slides as well. We also have deep learning performance and of course because we do have those tensor cores there both the 2080 and the 2080 Ti excuse me absolutely demolish their predecessors. We also have some further information regarding overclocking with these GPUs and these are some leaked slides which have popped up courtesy of the website videocards.com. In a nutshell, NVIDIA are claiming that the RTX 2070, 2080, and finally the 2080 Ti are built 
for overclocking. In other words, that the GPUs have a lot of overclocking headroom, and this, of course, will net greater performance compared to that of the vanilla models. What's rather interesting is that the Founders Edition or reference versions, if you prefer, hit a maximum of just 29 decibels, which is really bloody impressive. I mean, I, I personally think that's an astounding number right there. And it is cool and quiet. You can see that the performance numbers right here with the fan acoustics versus the predecessors. And it is really bloody impressive what Nvidia have managed to achieve. And also the overclocking state is very good as well. Next up, we have information regarding the VRMs. And according to NVIDIA, there's better voltage curves on the card, there's much better VRMs, and that's been confirmed by the company already. And in addition to that, we have a higher TDP that these cards can go for, plus dynamic boosting is said to be considerably more aggressive. So of course, that means when we have Turbo Boost enabled, in theory at least, these GPUs should be better at clocking, not just at higher speed, but also maintaining that clock speed consistently. And this, by the way, is something that we're definitely gonna be testing here on the channel. So do stick with us if you are interested in that information. And once again, this is gonna be one of those points which is going to probably depend on your setup because obviously it depends upon heat, how much power that the cards are consuming and so on and so on. But how all of this reflects on the performance of the GPUs is definitely going to be something that we are very interested in testing. Finally, we have some unofficial numbers for 3D Mark Firestrike as well as Time Spy, and this is actually with the newest drivers which are available for reviewers, and this is leaked out on the internet. We have a couple of results for Time Spy and Firestrike. We're going to start things out with the RTX 2080 Time Spy because we have a couple of comparison numbers 9097 for one and 10,147 for the total scores. That means we have a graphic score of 9,319 and 10,659. That is with an RTX 2080. The reason for the difference here is most likely because of a custom AIB. It's reported to be gigabyte, which of course means that we're gonna see higher clock speeds. And we also have some results for Time Spy Extreme, which is scoring 4,925 points. And as for Fire Strike, well, that's even possibly more impressive indeed. As with the graphics score, we're looking at 27,085 points. These particular results are also paired with an i7-8700K and 16 gigabytes of memory, which means it's pretty representative of the type of processor and memory configuration that these kind of cards would flourish with. So that means anyway that the RTX 2080 is actually putting out more performance than a Titan X PGPU. That to me is really cool. Um, so what does this mean in terms of performance numbers? Well, it certainly does appear that the Fire Strike and Time Spy benchmarks do back up Nvidia's own claims. If we look at the synthetics here, not only is the RTX 2080 the vanilla card, admittedly, yes, it is factory overclocked in some instances, putting out higher performance than the GTX 1080 Ti, but it's actually putting out more performance in this particular example than the Titan XP which to me is really bloody impressive. Of course, I'm not necessarily suggesting it's going to be that level of performance across all different titles. We're gonna to have to see how it handles different games with different uh, APIs, whether it's Vulkan, whether it's DirectX 11, DirectX 12, different visual effects, and of course, different game engines. But it is looking like this particular GPUs are gonna be absolutely monstrous. With all of that said, Yes, I am still suffering a little bit from jet lag, as you can possibly tell, although it is considerably better. I flew uh, in Wednesday uh, into Seattle. I actually left uh, 9.50 in the UK, uh, went on the plane, was in the air around 10 hours, landed in Seattle around midday, and then, well, yeah, it's jet lag, so you can imagine what it's like going back eight hours in time, but I am doing pretty darn well. I'd also like to take a moment to thank HP Computers as well for loaning us the Omen X laptop. This is not a sponsored video, but they were kind enough to provide an Omen X laptop for the purposes of this trip because they knew I was going away. So once again, I'd like to extend my thanks to them, and you can check more information of the Omen X brand laptops in the video description if you so desire. With all of that said, take care of yourself and bye for now.